the Lord made me think of trees while I was preparing to lead us all in Holy Communion today. Did you know that in the book of Genesis and in the book of Revelations, there is mention of something called the tree of life? You've heard of that? Everybody's heard of the tree of life? You know, there were two trees in the center of the garden, or close by, but the one in the center, center, center of the garden of Eden was the tree of life. And the Lord told Adam and Eve that you can eat of all the fruits of all the trees in the garden except how? Okay, try again. It was a trick question. <laughs> the Lord said you can eat of all the fruit of all the trees in the garden except tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Ah, gotcha all. Not the teacher. Alright. So it means that they were allowed to eat of the tree of life. Do you agree with me? If the Lord only said don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil basically it was the knowledge of good and evil but also of sin and death and the lord said no don't eat of that one but they were allowed to eat of the tree of life because what was the tree of life and the tree of life was in the center of the garden so from every point they could be close to it you see to get there now the tree of life i believe was a spiritual but also a physical thing. A thing with a capital T. Because I actually believe that the tree of life was Jesus himself. That's the life. Because the tree of life gave them eternal life. And as long as they ate of the fruit of the tree of life, they would have eternal life. Because that's what the name says, right? Tree of life. Right? So they would eat of this tree and they would not age. Because it was the tree of life. So that's what they did. But then you all know what happened with the temptation to eat of the other tree that the Lord said, don't eat of that one, right? So in that moment when they ate, or when they were when they were disobedient, and they went against what the Lord said. Because the Lord gave them free will, otherwise they would be robots. So the Lord gave them free will and said, I want you to obey me, so I'm going to give you one thing that you're not supposed to do. So you make the choice so that they could exercise their free will. Because you're only really free when you have a choice, right? Yes. And that's what the Lord did. But the tree of life was always there and they could always eat of it. Now I said it's a spiritual thing because I believe it connected them with heaven. I believe it was eternal life that they could physically take and eat, right? There was a physical thing, but also a spiritual thing. And then what happened when they sinned, suddenly evil became part of them. Sin came in. Suffering, death, sickness, all those things became part of them. And you know what the Lord did in His mercy and grace? He chased them out of the garden. Why? Because if they had eaten from the tree of life, after eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would have lived for eternity in a state of being condemned, in a state of being sick, eternally suffering, eternally, you know, being tortured. And that's what would have happened. So what the Lord did is get out of the garden and he put some angels there with some flaming swords, if you remember the story, to keep them out, right? So they didn't have access. But I believe the tree of life was also that connection between them and God. And it brought fellowship with the Lord. And it brought that close communion. So what happened in that moment, they didn't have access anymore. And I believe that they yearned for that. They yearned to be connected with their Creator again. They yearned to be back with the one who made them. And the one that they knew were their source of life. But they couldn't. Because it was broken. A flashback to New Testament, right? And here the Lord comes once again in grace and mercy, like we just said, and He sends Jesus to come and re 
prepare once again to come and make it possible for us to have that connection with the Lord. Once again to have fellowship with the Lord. Once again that place inside of us that is so empty for the Lord to come and fill it. So that once again we can feel freedom, feel life. Because Jesus says in the way, I am the truth and I am the life. Doesn't it sound like something that the tree of life could actually have said in the garden? When they come closer for the fruit, I'm sure Jesus would have said, Come, Adam, come, Eve, come eat of this fruit because it's eternal life for you. Come, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. So, what Jesus did once again, He came and He made that connection open for us by doing it on this day that we commemorate what He did, by coming and giving His life. Because it came from heaven, so it came from the eternal into our midst. And it came, it came to restore that gateway, that connection, that portal between God and between and, and us. And I believe that's what happened. Sure. So we think about it like that. Then there's another thing that Lord, the Lord Jesus gave us that is spiritual but also physical and material. And it's what you see here in front of you. And if you think about it, we use in this church, we use grape juice, or we can use wine as well, and we use some kind of form of grain, like a bread or a matzo or something. And that's also taken from something that grows, right? A fruit of something. Wow, that's good. Sure. So isn't it almost like when we do Holy Communion? Like once again, the tree of life comes and he stands in front of you. And he says, come wherever you are. Come wherever once. Come and take of the fruit. And I'm not saying that eternal life is in the actual things. Just like I believe the eternal life was not in the actual fruit from the tree of life, right? That was vitamin C and some other things, right? <laughs> you agree with me? But it was the spiritual thing. But the fruit became a symbol of that, of taking and eating and partaking and believing that it's also for you <coughs> and for me. Because that's the act of taking, saying, yes, it's for me and I want it and I'm taking it because I need to once again be connected to my Creator, to the way, the truth and the life. Yes. So I believe as I read this now from Matthew 26, I'll read the whole thing and then we'll, we'll serve this. While they were eating, the tree of life took bread. And when he had given thanks, did he have it up for us? He broke it and gave it to all the people around him. And he's still giving it us to us today. And he said, take this and eat. This is the fruit of my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood. This is the fruit coming from me of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I'm going to stop it there. So we should start thinking further about communion. It's not just about drinking a little bit and taking a small piece of something and chewing it but it's the spiritual behind it that on this day Jesus came to forever come and restore the fellowship come and restore our access to the tree of life so that we can have that once again and that's what we celebrate today so as you take it you can say thank you Lord Jesus for what you did Thank you that even the cross was a piece of wood from a tree, but it was dead. Lord, but you are the tree of life because you overcame death. Yes. And therefore, Lord, if we just connect yes. with you, Lord Jesus, if we give our lives to you, Lord, if we connect it to you, Lord, your very life flows through us. And that is what we celebrate as we take now the symbols of this, but we take from you, Lord Jesus. And like you
you told us, Lord, we take and we drink, we take and we eat, and we celebrate you. Thank you, Lord Jesus.